I think I can start. <laughs> Hi, so my name is Joanna Popelio. I work um, uh, with biodiversity projects at the European Nucleotide Archive. And I, for those who don't know, the European Nucleotide Archive is the European node of DINSTC. And uh, together with NCBI and uh, DDBJ. And in this um, presentation, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the discussions and efforts that we have been doing um, in the last few months within the, the scope of a, a project bicycle that you heard a lot about already. Um, on um, trying to develop standards and tools to improve the eDNA and metabarcoding deposition um, at ENA. Okay, so I'm, you're going to listen to a lot of things that you have already heard this morning, so I'm sorry for that, <laughs> but just as a context, so we all know that the, the development of the um, high throughput sequencing has boosted the generation of a lot of data um, around eDNA and, and, and uh, metabarcoding studies. <clears throat> and it is very important that this data becomes widely available. So it has a, a, a great impact or a greater impact on biodiversity management and uh, responses to uh, global change. So uh, it is very important that we make this data fair as we are already heard this morning, um, there are already uh, there are already data sets available both at DNA and at GBIF and at other databases like we just heard the the ASV uh, database, uh, and sometimes this data is even linked. So here we have an example of a data set in GBIF that is linked to the raw reads that are deposited at DNA, but unfortunately this is just a minor. Um, as we all seen already, so this is just a minor um, amount of data when we look at, at the uh, amount of data that is produced. So, um, so within this project, Project Bicycle, that um, I guess you all know what it is, um, in, in addition to um, working on leaking data between research infrastructures, so uh, all, on the overall um, research cycle, we also had uh, an additional goal that would be to provide a um, structured data repository for molecular uh, ecology matrix data. So basically the OTUs, the NSV tables that derive from these eDNA and metabarcoding studies. Uh, so Tobias already explained this uh, <laughs> pipeline from sample to sequences. Uh, just going over it, so this then I can uh, explain a bit how we fit this data on our database. Um, so as we know, we start in samples. That samples are those samples are amplified for a specific marker. We generate the raw read, so the the raw data from the sequencing machine. These go into a bioinformatic processing, and then you have uh, the sequences that correspond to uh, amplicon sequence variants, so ASVs or OTUs. And then we have an additional table, or I mean, this, this can be all together in one table or split in three different tables, where you have uh, the taxonomic identification of that sequences and its occurrence in the different uh, samples that were included in this analysis. And how do we fit this within our uh, metadata model at DNA? So our data, metadata model at DNA um, starts by an, uh, an overall study. So the project that encompasses all data. It also has the samples uh, that char are characterized so that have a specific metadata to characterize the sample and the collection event. And then you can also submit the data itself. And the, the reads, so the raw reads are uh, submitted as runs that have the experiment that describes the metadata of those runs, so the sequencing methods, the process that, that delivered those raw reads. And those runs, the raw reads are linked to the sample and are linked also to the project. And then you have data analysis, so process data that you can submit, and those include the sequences, those include the genome assemblies that uh, derived from analysis of those raw reads. They are linked to the raw information and also to the sample of origin and within a certain project. And how can we fit uh, the molecular uh, ecology data or the eDNA data? So the samples are characterized within samples, and for that we have uh, specific uh, checklists that uh, describe the standards and describe the metadata that can be associated with it. 
we, uh, we base ourselves on community standards and on genomics standard consortium standards like the mix um, checklists. We have different checklists for different type of samples. And, these, um, and within these checklists, we have a set of mandatory fields that are the minimum amount of information that is required for that, uh, for describing that biological sample. And we have a lot of optional information that can also be uh, submitted. The raw data, as I already detailed, will go into the raw reads linked with the, the specific sample or samples of origin. And then the um, OTU and ASV tables um, can, are in fact a data analysis objects. So there are processed information. And we have a couple of objects that can be used to submit this information as for example, targeted locus sets that are submitted through NCBI and sequence annotations. However, this data is not very much used for these type of data. Uh, we have, I think, one OTU table stored um, as an OTU table. There are other types of uh, matrix information that are stored in these data sets. And uh, also this information is stored simply as a TSV file. So it, it doesn't actually, um, it's not very interoperable at the moment, linking with the sample and the raw reads. It contains that information, but the, the contents of the OTU table um, is only stored as a, a text file. So we have identified as current needs, the need of a structured data object for eDNA and metabar coding. Uh, also, the need for having submission tools that would be able to support other used formats as to be as described the biome format. And also uh, a need to improve and develop standards so this data can be uh, uh, deposited with all the information that is needed for interoperability and reusability. So what, what have we done so far? So we have assessed the, the requirements for this type of data. We started and are having ongoing discussions with the community on the standards and requirements that um, we have for data retrieval. And we discussed um, the data model and the possible analysis objects for submission at ENA. In terms of um, the discussion on standards and requirements, we, we had a, a round table with, with some experts and with the different research infrastructures that we um, collaborate with. And the main points raised, uh, we, dis we discussed a lot of things, but the main points raised was that the raw data should be fully available and accessible so that the data can be reanalyzed re and reused if needed. Um, there should be an effort to make this a mandatory thing in, in, in terms of submission. Uh, very important would be to document the provenance of the data since it, the sample is collected until you have the, the analysis and bioinformatic processing results. And also the need for easy data submission systems uh, that would avoid uh, the duplication of efforts so that users don't have to submit to different repositories. And this implies a bit communication uh, between the different databases. Uh, and we also discussed if we need a reward system for data sharing so we can boost <laughs> this um, information. Uh, in terms of data re retrieval, again, that the duplication of data storage should be avoided. Uh, that we need to have a good linking between the different data types, so the samples, the raw data, the process data, so we can uh, assess it easily. It would be very important also to have the taxonomy linked with the sequences, um, and there was a lot of discussion in terms of uh, potential data formats that would be useful, and I'm not going to get into that. So just to uh, finalize, so what are we currently do, doing? Uh, so we are um, trying to set a new data analysis object at ENA, where we could have the set of sequences associated with the OTU table, and it's including it, the taxonomic information that was assessed from, that, from those sequences. That would include the provenance information that would be linked to the samples and to the raw data, but that's a part of our model, and complying with community standards. We're also working on tools to develop, uh, to facilitate um, data submission and linking, and um, trying to continue the discussions with the community to improve this uh, data linking and accessibility. And I would like to thank everyone that is participating in Bicycle and, and that has contributed to these discussions and to all of you for listening. Thank you. So Kit is liking the idea with the reward system. <laughs> Other questions?
you. Hi, um, Steve Formel from GBF US and Ovis USA. I'm curious if um, uh, the other nodes of the INSDC are, uh, you know, how are they thinking about this? Are they excited about it, ignoring it? What are they doing? I think there is an overall higher awareness for these type of biodiversity data, though we are initially working on our own side to try to see what we need and how we need to develop, and then um, sharing it within the nodes at INSCC would be a second step. Uh, so I have two questions. Um, yeah. Is the idea that this will um, be backwards compatible? So those, is, those of us that have a, a bunch of data in the repositories will now be able to, or when this is going, we'll be able to update, upload our OTU tables for those projects? I mean, if you already have the raw reads available at the NA, there, there wouldn't be any issue in submitting um, the sequence, the, the analysis objects. Yes, that is possible. Okay. Um, and then how does this um, link with things like uh, Magnify or, or um, initiatives by um, ENA to produce derived data products? Will, will they be linked to the um, raw reads in this way as well? Well, yes. I mean, Magnify has been one of the uh, groups that is involved in these discussions. So they pick up data from us, the raw reads, and they process the data and then generate OTU tables. Uh, these tables for now are not resubmitted to ENA because the, the, the process we have isn't, um, well, there isn't the structured uh, database for that. But I guess if we had that, um, once we have this data object, I suppose they could submit also the data back to us. So they could pick up the raw reads, do the analysis and submit the processed analysis back to us as they are already submitting, for example, for to GBIF. Yeah, yeah, so that'd be. Yeah, and the idea would also to be to have a communication with GBIF where they already pick up our sequence data, but they could also pick up this type of data to uh, display it at GBIF and uh, potentially vice versa, but we still have, to have a lot of discussions to have on that. Yeah. yeah. Just uh, three short uh, comments. I would like to uh, stress that the work that you have seen in the first half of the session is actually rooted in the Tadwig Plus series the, the guide that was on the screen several times was started out of the coffee break discussion with Andrew Young during Biodiversity Next four years ago, who approached us and said, like, looks like you know how to handle this eDNA data in the broader biodiversity data context. Why don't you guys write it up? And so we did. And from that, the tools were built and all the discussions and projects you see now, they actually only two, three time weeks ago. I think this is fantastic progress. And... Um, I think there could be a point of confusion if you come to the session from the kind of classical biodiversity data collection, you may be lost in the standard options. Why extension? Where is mixes? How does it all connect to the GGBN standard? It's actually not so confusing. There is a two, two kind of major points from where it all comes together. There is the world of Darwin Core represented by Tadwick, and then there is the world of mixes and the DNA extension and the GGBN data standard, uh, they are basically hybrids making uh, sure that uh, the relevant fields from both standard clouds work together well. And uh, so, so there is nothing scary there. And uh, um, I would like to stress the importance of the final talk in this session. What we do here is rooted in, in the gene bank history, in the human genome process, uh, project where Bermuda principles were set and followed very enthusiastically in the beginning that we, when every sequence generated uh, uh, was counted as a public domain data and should be released in the, in the 24 hours, I think that was the formulation uh, from, from production. We, I think we tend to forget the importance of that and I, we're sort of reinventing the Bermuda principles here in the biodiversity context and uh, referring to the slides several times when sequence data can be dropped in so many places, we need to remember that the archival and the central access to the raw sequence through the INSDC family is as important as resurfacing DNA derived data in the context of the systems we are involved in. I would like just to stress the importance of this. Thank you. Thank you. More questions for Joanna? I think we go to copy break. Yes, okay. Uh, AV guy, you promised to, to uh, put up my revised uh, slide.
It's the second or third last thing in the revised deck. Uh, 